we are now a few weeks into this war in Ukraine. I think it, technically we're around the 10-day mark. I think uh, the, the two-week mark will come later this week. This is certainly the third week we've been talking about it because of all the situations here. I said last week in one of these videos that the important thing for us to do as Canadians, specifically the Prime Minister and the federal government, was to get going. Uh, to get going on some of these decisions that we have just been ignoring for too many years, specifically with military procurement. Not because Canada is going to charge to the rescue. Not because we're going to put together some task force and go save Ukraine. The Ukrainians, God bless them, are going to have to save themselves. And Canada can and should contribute in terms of uh, weaponry, uh, ammunition reloads, financial sanctions, all the stuff generally we've been doing. But we're going to have to get serious here about our own security and, and allied security. That is where we need some urgency here. Now, the Canadian government in general, and this is not a, a partisan comment on the Liberals, this is a Canadian government-wide problem. We don't do, we don't do speed. It's not really what we do. Canada is a slow country. A lot of the time, you could maybe make the argument that that is a feature, not a bug. Maybe there's something about our political culture that has allowed us to be a more moderate, thoughtful country over the years. You can't argue with success, and Canada is an unusually successful country in terms of its quality of life. The problem is you have to separate all the advantages we have, like, you know, in inherited um, political systems, uh, geographic proximity to the world's hegemon, uh, our, our natural resource bounty, etc. You can't look at our slowness and go, oh, that explains Canadian success. But okay, maybe you could make the argument that it is contributed, or at the very least it hasn't hurt. There are moments it hurts, and we have seen this during the pandemic where our officials in this country have just been... I don't want to say they've been useless, but they've been caught, caught flat-footed. They've had a really hard time keeping up with the demands of the moment because they're used to working at one speed, the speed of Canadian bureaucracy, and then they're forced suddenly to move at the speed of reality, and they struggle. Last week, I told the Prime Minister, time to get serious, time to get moving. <laughs> We, we haven't seen a lot yet. Maybe we will in the days or weeks to come. Hey, maybe I'm being unrealistic. Maybe something that seems urgent to me by federal standards still seems urgent, but they're going to measure that on weeks instead of days. I will say this, though. I have been generally impressed overall by the reaction to this war and this crisis once the war actually began. And it reminded me a little bit of, of the start of COVID, where... Whether you want to look at the the days before kind of COVID really popped in North America or even the two months before when it was already spreading in other parts of the world, Canada and, and our allies yet again have had plenty of strategic warning. I mean, 2008, Russia invades Georgia. 2014, Russia invades Crimea. In the, in the years since, the encroachments of Russia into eastern Ukraine. The last few months, the, the massive buildup of Russian military forces around the Ukrainian border. These are all signs we kind of missed. And I think we were looking at them and going, oh, that's okay, don't worry, that'll stop there. Or, mm, yeah, okay, that's bad, but don't worry, he won't actually do anything. I think we were crippled by our normalcy bias. Things don't go wrong because they don't go wrong. Or things don't go wrong because, ah, well, we don't want to worry about that. Well, sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes you do have to worry about these things. Time to get the let out, Canada. It's time to make some decisions. We have done a generally good job responding to the crisis. What we now need to do is figure out what we're going to do next, make some decisions to make sure this country can defend itself and our allies. But more to the point, sooner or later, whether it's COVID or this, or even the recently concluded protests in Ottawa, we need to have a conversation about why this country is governed by institutions, not just political leaders of any particular stripe, but institutions that are so often caught completely flat-footed by things that are awfully obvious to basically everyone else who's paying any attention. One day, our inability to see the bad thing coming before it hits us is going to actually do a whole lot of damage that otherwise could have been avoided. Arguably, I've already given you three recent examples where it did that already. Oh.